The Angels lose one last night. What went wrong? John and I will tell you and get you set for today's game against the White Sox. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. My name is Mike, and that's my brother John. You know, I, I gotta say that uh, it, it is fun to talk Angels baseball every single weekday, Monday through Friday. And even though last night was kind of a stinker, I'm still glad to be here, Mike. I'm glad yeah, to so am I. connect with you and connect with our Lockdown Everydayers. Speaking of which... We are going to recap t- today's game. It's at 107 today. We're going to recap that for Friday's show and do two segments of Fan Mail Friday. So get your questions in for Fan Mail Friday. We'll be answering those for you on tomorrow's episode after we recap today's Angels White Sox game. On today's show, you know, a lot of people like to say, oh, Tony's leaving because of this or because of that. And we're going to tell you why those are wrong. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I can't wait yes, for that. Yes, <laughs> he, he might sign somewhere else, but. It's not going to be for the reasons that we're going to share with you today. And what do the Angels need to do to get into the playoffs? Well, you and I believe, Mike, the Angels need to get to 90 wins at least. And we're going to tell you if they can make that happen this season. But first, let's talk about that game against the White Sox last night. The Angels drop it 11 to 5. Just poor pitching. Yeah. all around in this yeah one, right? it's one of those games that you kind of expect to happen you just don't know when it's gonna <laughs> yes. happen yes right? i know and what you're saying being angel fans for a long time this is one of those games where you're like oh this is it this is the game so i actually went outside and watered the plants for a while while this game was happening and so jaime Berea is on the mound he's been one of the best pitchers since may especially for the angels but he just wasn't crisp last night johnny he he had a, a very flat slider. A lot of his pitches were in the middle of the zone. And mm-hmm. the White Sox are not a good hitting team. And if you put a ball in the middle of the zone, Major League Baseball players are going to hit that. Mm-hmm. I know that it had been also 10 days since he pitched last. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know about that, Johnny. I, I, I get frustrated when I hear that. And I get rhythm and consistency is so important. And so I actually would ask the question like, so since it's been so long, what are you doing so that you are prepared for this? Sure. Because yeah. you know you're going to be starting soon, yeah. and I don't necessarily blame management. I just I kind of look at like th- there needs to be some sort of rhythm that these guys have. Him and like Tucker Davidson, they have to have some sort of rhythm where they're able to pitch to live pitching. Maybe it's during batting practice. I don't know what they need to do, but sure. I, I hate that excuse. It's been ten days since. I, I don't know why I hate it, but I just hate it. Yeah, it's, I mean, you go back to his last start, which was against the Rangers, if you can believe it. That was the last time he started. Then uh, he went three innings uh, 10 days ago, and I believe it was Kansas City that he went up against. Basically finished out the game. It was great. It was much needed. He he went three innings pitched and and helped get that done and over with. But yeah, you, you have to wonder, what are you doing in between those sets, especially when you know that you're the number six guy and that you're not needed every single day? Now, does Phil Nevin need to work him into a game between his last bullpen outing and this outing maybe but how much do you want to use him in between that time so it's a weird balance i also think you you mentioned the slider he was throwing it really hard mike and gooby mentioned that on the broadcast and and when you throw a slider like that it almost ends up becoming a low velocity cutter cut fastball because that that velocity on a hard slider rises and is about what a cut fastball is. And it takes away movement. It takes away the horizontal movement, the vertical movement. It's just not effective. And that's what it looked like with Jaime Berea last night. Five runs in the first three innings. That's all he did was go three innings. He gave up three home runs and seven hits over that time. So it's just a really unfortunate outing. But then the Angels recently called up Andrew Wance back from AAA 
somebody who's been good, Mike, but honestly, he's not been great for the second half of this first half, if that makes right. sense. Right. Uh, he, he came in in the fourth inning, immediately loads the bases, gives up a bases loaded double, three run score. The number nine hitter for the White Sox uh, looks like Aaron Judge out there, hitting right. two yeah. home runs, four RBIs, just <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And, and so it was just another one of those games where you just kind of expected the wheels to fall off. And they, <laughs> this is what's frustrating to me. Um, the, the, the fact that Mike Trout was taken out in the seventh inning when the angels were down by seven yeah, and they put Andrew, uh, Velasquez in center field to replace him defensively. But Mike, Andrew Velasquez ended up getting two at bats right in the remainder of this game. And even though the scorecard says 11 to five, they had some chances to come back yeah, and they were wasted because Andrew Wentz swings at three pitches from Keenan Middleton. And and uh, I, I believe it was Swilly Sports on Twitter. She was at the game. She took a picture and she said, why are you swinging when the <laughs> left side of the infield looks like this? Yep. And, and it was all of the infielders for the White Sox shifted over. Velasquez could have easily bunted down the line, gotten Shohei to second base. Maybe Velasquez could have even been safe on the bunt attempt. But I felt like they threw in the towel in the seventh inning because you took Mike Trout out who just had a day off. What are we doing here? Right. Right. And then they had the home run from Drury and then they had the home run from Renfro. And then there were some competitive at bats and and we were kind of getting back into this thing. And if Matt Theis actually can make some contact, maybe get a hit that, that seventh inning could have been bigger than it was, but then the angels had other opportunities and Velasquez had, had at least one at bat where he could have made an impact and and he was Andrew Velasquez. It's it's what he does, right? He swings mm-hmm. and misses. He thinks he's Aaron Judge out there. And so he's going to swing for the fences, right? I, I'm not somebody who is overly critical of Phil Nevin because I think it's super easy to, well, Phil Nevin did this and Phil Nevin. Yeah. Last night, Phil Nevin taking Mike Trout out in the seventh. What are you doing? You, right. You, you threw in the towel in the seventh inning. And even though you might not think, well, Trout's not going to get it, another at bat or whatever. Velasquez got two of his yeah. at bats and that was just a huge mistake. And so that to me is uh, a point in the negative for Phil Nevin yeah. for sure. Now, Sam Bachman came in, he pitched the first scoreless inning in this game for yeah. the angels in the top Good of the Sam. six. Um, it's the first time since June 3rd, the angels have trailed by more than four runs. So, uh, pretty good stat there. It goes but to show all- that how how these games have been so close. It's why yes. all Angel fans are uh, going bald because we we were we're stressed <laughs> out watching these games because it has been so close. And this offense has the chance to come back. They've scored a ton of yeah. runs this year, Johnny, and it looked like they were going to be able to do that, especially in the first inning when Otani triples and then Trout triples and then Drury drives them in. And so we had a great opportunity to come back. And Brandon Drury had a really great game, three RBIs with a home run. I really felt like. Lucas Giolito, we helped him out last night because hmm. he was kind of on the ropes in the first couple of innings, mm-hmm. but we were swinging at some pitches when we were ahead of the count. And and I'm going to pick on Taylor Ward, and I'm going to keep picking on oh, him until please, he turns away. some things around. Yeah. But he was up three balls and one strike with Otani and Trout coming up, and he swings at a ball that would have been ball four and pops out. And mm-hmm. it just doesn't seem like he's having a competitive at bat. Somebody on Twitter said it just looks like he's not confident in himself, and perhaps mm-hmm. that's the case, but – Man, it's just it's frustrating to see these guys attack the zone when when perhaps they don't need to be in attack mode on that particular pitch. And yeah. uh, the night before, or as a leadoff guy, like if that's you, other, your job yeah, that's, is to get that's on a base, great point. that's a really <laughs> great point, and that's what he should be doing. The night before, the Angels had I think nine walks, and they didn't capitalize on any, yeah. any of that stuff. And so it was just it was really really frustrating. And then this is just a personal pet peeve, Middleton. You gave up a run and three hits. Stop getting the third out and thinking that you won the World Series. That guy <laughs> gets off the mound and pounds his chest and points to the sky. And I get you're excited, but come on, like it's it's the middle he's of June. Gotta, you're ten games vendetta. under five hundred. Yeah. It's it's he's just he's just a frustrating guy, right? <laughs> he, he told Angel fans they weren't cheering loud enough when there were cardboard cutouts in the stands in 2020, which makes no <laughs> logical sense whatsoever. Um, we'll see if his that, cousin. <laughs> we'll see if his cousin Kenyon Yovan can actually be a, a good reliever for us and and do much better than than keenan but uh all that to say the angels are back at it today at 107 pacific time it's lance lynn versus patrick sandoval you know they got to lance lynn last time out the guy was hurling some fastballs in there and they were in attack mode so hopefully they can do that again 
I'm curious to see if Sandoval can keep them in this game because last night, Mike, five runs should get the job done. Yep. And unfortunately, the pitching didn't get it done on their side. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. And coming up on Locked on Angels, we're going to share with you the reasons why Otani is not leaving the Halos for the reasons you think he is. It's not going to happen that way. We'll talk about that coming right up. Locked on Angels is brought to you by the Game Time app. With the Game Time app, buying tickets is fast and easy. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up until the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price and event cancellation protection. On the Game Time app, you can buy tickets in two seconds, in a matter of seconds, two taps in your set. You can see the images of your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Tickets are sent directly to your phone. Don't have to dig through any email. And if you find tickets in the same section and the same row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. You can grab tickets without all the stress with the Game Time app. Download it right now, create an account, and use our code LOCKEDONMLB to get $20 off your first purchase. There are some terms that do apply, but again, create an account and use our code locked on MLB to get $20 off last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Thanks for making locked on angels. Your first listen of the day locked on every day join us tomorrow as we recap today's game against the white Sox and answer your questions for fan mail Friday. Get those questions in, hit us up on our voicemail line, which is in the episode description below the video or uh, in the description of wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, the Angels are are back at it at 107 Pacific time. Catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Mike, how are you liking the uh, SXM app you got for Father's Day? I love it because now when I'm in my car, I can listen to it. Or when I'm in my wife's car or my son's car or my daughter's car, I get to carry it with me everywhere I go. And you know that I'm just stuck on 90s on 9. That's I know, I know. Spe- and locked on of, angels. <laughs> speaking of 90s on 9, how about the 90 win pace? We're hoping that 90 wins, the angels can get to that at least. And and you and I have said 15 wins a month can do it. Yep. Uh, but we, But before we get to if the angels can do that, Let's talk about some some history here. Yeah, so after uh, Tuesday night's game, the Angels finished their first half. I know the All-Star break is really the first half, but the Angels played 81 games, mm-hmm. and their record at the time was 44 and 37. So, Johnny, over the last nine years, here's where the Halos have sat after 81 games. So in 2022, they were 37 and 44. Ugh. In 2021, they were 40 and 41. In 2020, they were 9 and 21. That was a disastrous COVID year. Uh, 2019, 2018, and 2017, they were 41 and 40. Wow. After 81 games. Interesting because 2019 was a terrible season with Brad Osmus as the manager. Just a (laughs) terrible season. In 2016, 33 and 48. In 2015, 43 and 38. And then in 2014, uh, 46 and 35. Now that was the last time that the angels actually made the playoffs and got to more than 90 wins that season. In fact, did they have the best record that season, Johnny? I believe they did in 2014. in 2014 best record in baseball. Uh, was it 93 wins? Is that what you said? Yeah. 93 I, I don't wins. remember how many wins they had that year, but we can look it up. Somebody needs to correct us in the comments, but I know yeah. that they had the best record and then they, they got knocked out by the Kansas city Royals, yeah. um, but we won't talk about that. So Johnny, any surprises, first of all, as you look at the last nine years after 81 games, this is obviously the best record we've had after 81 games since 2014. Yeah. 41 and 40 is really surprising to me for those three years, exactly 41 and 40 yeah. from 17, 18 and 19 and and it's funny because the, you can see like 2015. Tw- this is this is what surprises me. 2015 was 43 and 38, and on Tuesday after 81 games, the Angels were 44 and 37. So I remember it coming down to the wire in 2015. Yeah, and and the problem was is that the Angels had to wait for somebody to lose. I think. I think the Rangers had to win a game against the people we were competing for the wild card in 2015. Basically it came down to game 162 Mm -hmm. and the angels didn't get into the playoffs because of that. And I'm interested in that notion because in 2015, that was the case. And this year with the angels having 
a somewhat similar record. You know, uh, they were seven games above 500 on Tuesday. Now they're six. In 2015 at 81 games, they were five games above 500. So to me, it just really goes to show that the Angels need to take their fate into their own hands. Yeah. And and honestly, get to that 15 win mark a month and not let it come down to the wire at the end of the season, not put it in somebody else's hands and hope that somebody else beats the team that you're trying to get into the wild card for. So um, I, I think the angels have a chance to take their fate in their own hands. In fact, uh, we've had, we've got a great locked on every day or uh, named Stefan Muma, who <laughs> we had a great moment because when I went to the star Wars night game, I was sitting in like the 300 section kind of by the foul pole in the upper deck. And he tweeted and said, Hey, I'm behind the bullpen. And we found each other during a home run celebration. Mm. And I pointed down to him and he pointed up at me. We were like, yes. And so uh, that was a, that was a great moment, but he's been doing something really cool for us. And we've been sharing it on our Twitter at locked on angels. So if you want to see it, you can see it there, but Mike, he he's got a great system here and basically it's he says we have to go five and four every set of nine games to win 90 and probably make the playoffs now we'll see if 90 is enough it right. was last year this yeah. is a very different season he <laughs> he tweeted at us recently and he's done this after every set of nine games and so he said we've played exactly nine nine set games and here's how that shook out the first set of nine we went five and four the second set four and five the third set five and four <laughs> the fourth set six and three the fifth set three and six the sixth set five and four the seventh set five and four listen to this the eighth set of nine games seven and two yeah that was where we uh did really well against the Cubs and the Rangers and all that. Yep. And then this last round of nine games, the angels went four and five. So that mm. puts them off by one game for a 90 win pace. So if they were to continue the pace they're on, they would get to 89 wins. Now that's one way to look at it because yeah. the pace is kind of ex extrapolates the results over the course of a season. However, our, our mentality has been just get 15 wins a month. The Angels have the chance to do that today against the White Sox or tomorrow against the Diamondbacks. Uh, we were kind of hoping that June might be a better month, but yeah, you know what? They can get those 15 wins. That would be really helpful. After last night's game, the Angels need to go 46 and 34 the rest of the way to get 90 wins. So the current record, 44 and 38, they have to get 46 and 34 the rest of the way. Is that reasonable? What do you think? 14 games over 500 is a tall ask for a team that is currently not 14 games over 500. Hmm. And so I, I think, I think that that is, uh, did I say 14? I meant 12 games over 500. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't major in math in college. Yeah. Um, and so 12 games, over, that sounds better than 14, uh, 12 games over 500. I, honestly, John, I, I don't think it's unreasonable, but where I think the angels are going to have to really turn it on is, they can't have a game like they had last night. Mm -hmm. They have to really dominate the teams that they are supposed to dominate. And, and I don't want to be the ridiculous fan and say they need to beat this team by this number all the time. But I, I think that they have to be more consistent in series against really bad teams. And instead of getting, taking two of three, I think that they have to have some big time sweeps coming up and they've mm -hmm. got some really tough teams that they're going to be playing in the next 20, 20, 21 games. Mm -hmm. I think they have to have some sweeps in those games. I think that yeah. as they move into July and August, they have to be able to not just take series, but actually sweep some of those bad teams and maybe even some of those good teams. Yeah. And, and the way you can look at it is this, I know that you were saying, they got to be 12 games over 500 the west the, the rest of the way uh but if you think about if they're 4 games over 500 in each month the rest of the way mm -hmm. i think that kind of lightens the load a little bit like yeah, i like that we're saying the same thing right yes. but i think if you consider it like they go 16 and 12 in one month or something like that yeah and 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 what have you you know 15 and 11 i don't know how many games exactly is in each month but right that sort of thing i think that kind of lightens the load a little bit smaller kind of, bites i get it yes yeah. exactly 
But you're right. The the July schedule is going to be a tough one. I feel like the Angels always play up, don't you? They play up to these. They certainly do. Teams. And I, I think that we saw that when they played the Texas Rangers. And that yeah. was a good indication as to who this team really is. I just think that they have to not have games where they falter. They they can't yeah. have they can't have games where like against Colorado or against Kansas City where they, they should have swept that series against Kansas City. And, and in Colorado, they can't lose two out of three, right? And right. so I get taking small bites, but th- that's where they just have to remain focused. One of the one of the indicators that I think are are kind of like the up and to the right for the Angels is that uh, they, they are going to get healthy. Joyce will be back and Moore will be back and Rendon will be back. It won't be Andrew Wance coming out of the bullpen anymore. It, it won't be that, right? So I, I think that that is a good indication of what this team can actually do. We just hope that they can stay healthy. And that's always been the narrative over the last few years. If they were healthy, here's what would have happened. I would rather have them healthy July, August, and September. So that way we can have a a great push to get into the playoffs. All right, right, Johnny, here's uh, uh, probably the the most fun we're going to have on this show in in a long time. (laughs) Um, I know, especially after a game like last night, I know that there's always somebody that says, well, Otani's leaving because they lost to the White Sox for 11 to 5. And and, and, and you you see that often. You'll see statements like Otani is most definitely leaving because of a bad game or a bad situation or the Angels weren't clutch, things like that. But Here's the thing that uh, that I can say confidently. We can't guarantee that Shohei Otani is staying. No. But what we can guarantee is Otani isn't leaving for the ridiculous reasons that fans create, right? (laughs) So what you and I decided to do is we're going to take some of those ridiculous reasons that we have seen and that we have heard, and we are going to share with you why those are not reasons why Shohei Otani is going to leave the Halos. So, Johnny, why don't you start us with the reason that has been shared with us perhaps the most this season? (laughs) Well, okay, he's not leaving because the Angels didn't score enough runs in some random game on a Monday night in June, right? (laughs) Like when he pitched. like That's not going to be the reason why he said, well, you know, june 26th they didn't give me enough run support and i'm out that's not gonna that's not gonna be how it goes down right and johnny he's not leaving because mike trout doesn't regularly play when he pitches he's just not leaving because of that he's not gonna go that's why i'm not gonna stay here anymore although there have been people right there have been people that have tweeted out this is why he's leaving because mike trout doesn't want to play when he pitches he's not gonna leave because of that right right and i'm sure that there is no world where in which mike trout says you know what phil I don't think I want to play tonight. I don't know. Right. You know, Otani's out there. You're good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Uh, he's not leaving because the Angels lost to the A's or the Rockies like the Dodgers did last night. By the way, they lost to the Colorado Rockies. The Dodgers season is not over. Our season isn't over yeah. just because we lose to a bad team. Yeah, and and he's not leaving because the Angels don't beat terrible teams twenty five to one every single time. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the man. If that becomes the new standard for what people expect when we play terrible teams, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, he's, he's not leaving because there's some sort of animosity or jealousy between him and Mike Trout. So stop making up narratives. This isn't Kobe and Shaq, people. This is Mike Trout <laughs> yeah. and Shohei Otani. And they both want the same thing. And the most adorable sports moment I've ever seen, and yes, I'm using the word adorable, Mm -hmm. is Shohei Otani waiting at the top of the steps to put the Kabuto on Mike Trout's head after they go back to back with home runs. Right. And he's not leaving because the angels don't want to win. And he's not leaving because the angels aren't serious about winning. They may not be serious. Like you would define serious, but he's not leaving because they don't want to win or they're not serious about winning. And I think what Perry Manassian has done in the off season. And so far this season shows that they're serious again, it may not be your serious, but he's not leaving because they don't want to win or the angels aren't serious about winning. Uh, he's not leaving because the Mets or the Dodgers have a better legacy, so to speak. You know, right. Jeff Fletcher, the beat writer for the OC Register, he reiterates this point all the time. And the best players don't always sign with the best teams. They don't yeah. all go to the Yankees or the Dodgers because they're the best teams out there and they're constantly good. You look at Nate Eovaldi went to the Texas Rangers, who had a horrible season last year. Right. But you know what? 
They're in first place right now because of Nate Eovaldi. He is the guy who is a huge part of getting the Texas Rangers to first place. Now, Jonah Hines having a great season. They brought up Ezekiel Duran, who's having a terrific season. So they have other contributors, but Eovaldi went, Hey, I like what's going on down there. I want to be yeah. part of that. So yeah. not everybody goes to these big market teams all the time. Johnny, he's not leaving because, because some nerd said Otani has made it clear that he's leaving. <laughs> Otani has never made it clear that he's leaving. And so pay attention, Angel fans. You can communicate that to people who say that he's made it clear. Otani has never made it clear that he's leaving. Right, right. Let's be he's clear. never said, yeah, he's ne- <laughs> yeah, he's never said it one way or the other. Uh, he's not leaving because he thinks Anaheim isn't cool enough. Look, best beaches, I think, in California are in Orange County. And and there's plenty of things. LA is just a hop, skip, and a jump away. You can go down to San Diego. You can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, but But as far as cool factor in Anaheim, uh, the, the team's the team's cool. The area's cool. I don't think that that's going to be the decision maker for Otani. <laughs> right. And he's not leaving because of the reasons why you would leave. Otani is not you. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mike, to be fair, I think as reasonable Angel fans, we need to understand that there are reasons why Otani would leave. Yes. And not return to Anaheim after this contract is up. First of all, if, if it's clear to him that the angels don't have a plan for the future and they don't have a pathway to serious winning seasons after serious winning seasons after this year, he's going to be out because yeah, I think so. honestly with Mike Trout signing his deal uh, prior to 2019, Billy Epler, I'm sure told Trout that there was a path, but then Billy Epler was gone after 2020. And yeah. so there has to be consistency in that approach to putting out winning season after winning season and having a path to success. Yeah, absolutely. And Johnny, let me give you two thoughts. He's not, he's, he, he, he's not going to, uh, to stay if he's not going to be able to dictate his approach to pitching and hitting, obviously Mm -hmm. he wants to be able to do that and control that. And he's not going to stay if he doesn't have the freedom. I think that he has right now to decide when he wants to speak to the media and when he doesn't, that's really important to him. And so I think, I think Shohei really wants control over his entire career and wants control over when he's accessible and when he's not. Right. And why would either of those things change with the angels? I think that is more of a concern for other teams out there. Are they going to let Shohei dictate what he wants to do? Are they going to let Shohei dictate when and where he talks to the media? The angels do that pretty well for him. They gave him uh, a lot of agency in this, uh, with this team. So that's a very big deciding factor. Mike, he's not going to leave or he would leave if he wants a better contract and the angels are not able to give him that contract, that would be a big reason. However, as many friends and uh, listeners of the pod have told us, especially those who speak Japanese, the money is not the priority. He's going to get paid no matter where he goes, but Shohei's never been about the dollar dollar bills, right? (laughs) Exactly. Hey, thanks for making locked on angels. Your first listen of the day. The angels play the white Sox today at one Oh seven Pacific time. And you can catch every pitch of the angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search angels. Hey, give us a follow at locked on angels on Twitter and at super halo bros on Twitter and Instagram. If you're on YouTube, comment below the video. What other reasons why Otani isn't going to leave? Share those with us in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Mike, what's on deck for tomorrow's show? We're going to recap today's game, and then it's also Fan Mail Friday. So get your questions, your comments, your thoughts. You can send it to us on social media, or you can even reach out to us on our voicemail line, and that voicemail number is in the show description. Awesome. We can't wait to get to your questions. Hopefully you can go out there and get a win today. Uh, Until tomorrow's show, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you back here on Friday.